Hi, friends of golfers. Eric Schor, EJS Golf, EJSGolf.com. Hope everyone's well. I want to talk to you tonight about something I'm asked often. Okay, so I guess how do I get better, right? Um, I'm asked this, right? So everybody wants to know, and I want to give you examples of what's done and what's not and how we're going to learn, okay? So you know, maybe I'll give a lesson, so I says, okay, what should I practice on? Or this is what I may see during a lesson. So I'm gonna try to just make this simple so it's shorter, okay? And that's, that's the only reason, not because you're not smart enough to get everything that I'd be talking about, but um, just uh, just wanna make it a little shorter. So a uh, motor learning, how, uh, uh, motor learning patterns. So I just went like that. I had an intention to do this with my hand, right? And it went there. I didn't have to think, okay, I'm gonna move my elbow up to here. I'm gonna rebalance myself here so everything stays steady. I didn't have to think any of that. That motor pattern's there, okay? So, golf. Golf is very difficult, I believe, for this reason. We do everything standing up right in front of us. That's why if I put a ball up here that you had to hit, you'd probably do pretty well, you know, eventually, you know, hitting it. And, and you, you would uh, have a much easier time doing it because I, you know, I do it with uh, my beginners. I start up here because they can, they know how to move up high. Everybody knows how to turn like this from up here. Once I get them down here into posture, it's like, how do I turn? What do I do? But if I go here to stand up here and turn, look how it's all simple. So hence where I believe golf is very unnatural because we don't do anything from this position at all, okay? So that's why I find it, um, it's, it's just not natural, like some people say. So, um, you know, motor patterns, getting back to those, they're in us for a long time, okay? So even, you know, if you look back medically, when people get injured and, you know, even through severe strokes, they'll still keep their motor patterns. They'll still know how to walk. They'll still know how to grab a cup of milk out of the fridge. They'll still know how to do everything like that. Now, there are occasions that it happens that you'll have to relearn them. But think about how rare that is compared to the damage that can happen to other parts of the body and that still works, okay? So it's amazing how it's deep inside our brain and it's protected for a good reason. And you know, when I was a younger coach, before I learned a lot about it, I used to think, oh, this is kind of stupid in a way that it's like this. I don't know if stupid is the word I'd use, but I didn't understand like how neat it is that we have these motor patterns because of how easy it makes our life every day now, okay? So, but getting into golf, when you've been playing a while and you have motor patterns already, incorrect ones, let's say you go in here, whip it in here, right, or something, you come over the top or whatever you do, um, it's not easy to change those, to build a new one. So how do you, how do you change it, okay? So let's simply talk about the word chunking. What is chunking? Chunking means getting, specifically, you can look up the exact definition. Now, I'm very bad at like remembering the exact definition. I can explain to you for 10 minutes what it means, or 20 minutes, but I would never get the exact words and definition. Um, but it's basically learning one thing at a time, right? And then moving on. So in a golf swing, we're not gonna learn our whole golf swing. Let's learn one thing. Now here, here's the key, like, so let's say there, you know, there's 10 positions that are called in the swing. You know, you, you can learn one, two, three, four. I don't teach like that. You know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now here's the thing. It's good to know those positions so you're able to check yourself to say, hey, am I doing pretty well near someone? You know, there's some I call imperatives, some that you have to hit, okay? But back back on topic, which I'm good at getting off topic. Um, you know, as far as, you know, I'll see this in, in, in less than the motor find somebody has a bad one. And I'll put a barrier up like this, okay? So it'll be one right here for um, to help them stop, um, let's say, coming over the top, right? So I'll put one here so they have to swing up like this, and they got to come underneath it, right? So they got to go kind of like this. So they'll do it one time, and I have a certain sort of, oh, okay, okay, now let me try it. The next one, they go like this. <laughs> you know? And so I'm like, it's not how it works, okay? So that brings up another issue right there of... What are we trying to do when we're chunking? We are not at all focused on outcome. We're focused on process, okay? Now, 
great teacher back in the day called Claude Harmon, Butch's dad, um, you know, who also also won the Masters, and he said this, and I, it, it rings so true. And he says, you show me somebody who's practicing for today, and you show me somebody who'll never be that great at golf. What does that mean? That means going to the range and just trying to get a night, whatever you're trying to do, see some good ball flight. You're not really working on anything. You're, you, you may think you are, uh, but you're really just swinging and swinging and swinging. You, you haven't bit, built up visual barriers on the range. You're not working probably in a, on an exact position. You're swinging full speed, which we won't learn most things at full speed. So it's not a great learning process, okay? So when we're trying to learn motor patterns, the best way we learn is in slow motion, guys, like, like that. So you can kind of make that motion, that sound like when it's in slow-mo, we're slowing everything down, like one of those things, okay? So, um, slow. I've got a lot of videos on it where I go like this. So say we're, we're working on, say I'm working on kind of my transition, okay? So I just had hand surgery a few, well, wait, now two months ago on my thumb, so I can't go real good on it yet. Okay, so I want to work a little bit on transition because I'm used to going like this, okay? So I'm going to swing normally up to here, and then I'm going to go, okay, wow, I'm in a pretty good position right here. Okay, I'm going to swing up again. And I may do that 10 times, okay? Maybe 10. And then maybe I'll step up, do the same thing, and try to hit a ball. Okay, so I'll prescribe five to one or even 10 to one if it's terrible, swings to balls, okay? You wanna get better, here's a tip here. Get rid of the large buckets of balls. Get a small bucket of balls. Even for you more experienced players too, okay? Why? Because go through each shot like you will on the course. You know, if, I, if I'm hitting, you know, towards there. When I practice, I step behind each one. I look at it. I'm looking where I'm trying to hit. If I'm at the range, I'm visualizing height, visualizing exactly where I want it to land. And I'm going through basically my whole process that I would on the course. The exact setup, I'm going through my pre-shot routine, practice strokes if I take any for chipping. And then why do I do that? Because it replicates, okay, to the course. If we're not doing that, we're in trouble, okay? So that's gonna be another video where I'm getting into block versus random practice, okay? So if you wanna get better, folks, let's focus on chunking. That is the best way for you to get through and learn new motor patterns, okay? So I would say for those of you that have trouble and you're beginners, or not even beginners, if you, if you have been playing for a while, but you have anything that's like this, anywhere where you do not rotate well, the number one thing you can do is learn to rotate. So here, okay, so you would go. Now look at this, I have a mirror back here you can't see. I don't know if you can see this one down here. It's got a red line down the middle, bump a little bit to the right and recenter, and guess what, I'm right there. So I'm not trying to keep my head still, I'm pivoting nicely, which will get me there, okay? So then I come here. So anybody who doesn't have a good pivot, when they come to see me, we work on the turn, okay? You have, it ha, it's, it's a prerequisite to good golf. You'll never see a great golfer who's, you know, like this out here on their side or standing up or swaying way back with the ball. You'll never see a great golfer do that. You may see a golfer go shoot 74s doing one of those, but guess what he'll also shoot? at 88, 82, 83. I don't want that for my students. I want them having very similar low scores. And on a bad day, you know, we don't go up 12, 13 strokes and I have no idea what's going on. Well, what went on is you just can't time it as well. That's all it is, it breaks down the timing. And we, and we wanna, we, there's timing. Golf is all about timing, but if we can limit some of it, we have a better chance, okay? So what have we learned about this? What we're gonna do? We're gonna work on chunking. Jeez, I'm gonna work in some slow-mo moves. So I really can feel, what am I doing? And I wanna be able to pick this foot up if I'm doing rotation a little bit and I should feel it right in my glute. That tells me I did it good if I can go here. This is barely picking it up, watch this. What if I'm here, what do I do? Look at the difference. It's a way to check it. And when you pull that foot up, you should feel it right in your glute, which is where you should be loading into your glute anyways, which will be brand new for some of you. So in order to build 
good functional new motor patterns work in a chunking mode work on whatever you are if your coach or me wants you working on your takeaway which i probably could work on my takeaway so i'm more here instead of how i'd like to get when i was a kid here you know i could work on getting more here so work on it in slow-mo okay get here so maybe one two three and then maybe try to hit one okay but do it in slow motion mode, feel it. And then don't, if you hit one good, don't be like, I got it, I'm done. Stick to it, maybe go down to two to one, and then one to one, but do your whole route practice like that, okay? You'll know when you have it, and that's when you move on to the next chunking process. And how do you know what that is? Hopefully you're working with a really good coach who's leading you to that. Um, Cause unless you know how to analyze your own golf swing perfectly, then you'd be in trouble with finding it, just trying to find it on YouTube, okay? That's just looking for feelings. It's looking for something that if, if you shank, you know, you may get somebody to tell you, okay, you're doing it because of this. Well, he's not looking at your swing, okay? Either am I when I get it. It's, it's more of general what most people do. While our swings are a little different and what will work better for you could be possibly different. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I know I ramble and go a bunch of places, but for you, I think it's a great benefit because not only did you learn about chunking right? You got to learn a lot more about some other things too in this video. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And most of all, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Eric Solar, EJSGolf, EJSGolf.com.